On this week's episode, Peloton lowers the price of the Peloton Tread and the rower teases new color options for the Bike Plus. Plus, Netflix is now available for some members. An update on how members enter the studio at PSNY and much, much more. Welcome to Pelo Buddy TV, a show for the Peloton community by the Peloton community. Here are your hosts, Amanda Siegel and John Pruitt. Welcome to episode 139 of Pedo Buddy TV, a show for the Peloton community by the Peloton community. I'm Amanda Siegel and I am joined by my co-host, John Pruitt. Hey, John. Hey, Amanda. How's it going? It is good. It's good. Um, everything I have to say is just, you know, kind of getting through the summer. It's hot as hell um, yep. here on the East Coast. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, it's um, hot as balls in Michigan right now. Too. It's, 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 it's humid. Too. It's, it's muggy. It's muggy. Yeah, out so right muggy. Now, currently. So muggy. Not, not um, comfortable at all. Definitely not wanting to be outside, so I'm um, staying inside, and um, yeah, I'm on a suit binge. I have just discovered suits <laughs> got, uh, on, and, on Netflix, and I am obsessed, obsessed. <laughs> so that's um, so that's what what I've been doing. Oops, that's what I've been doing. It's been really fun. Yeah, okay. had a fun weekend at P- at PSNY last weekend. Um, Little little quieter on Saturday. The the studio was just there Saturday and Sunday. Um, the studio was quiet. I did two classes. I did a, a Selena Samuela walk plus run and a Bex um, walk, uh, which nice. is really nice. I hadn't yeah I hadn't worked out with either of them in studio before um, on the tread. So it was nice to do somebody you know to be with somebody different. And um, and then on. Sunday, I had Ross, um, which we'll talk about in Picks of the Week, but a meditation um, and a class with Ross, and then a run with Mariana. So, um, yeah. Awesome. It's definitely interesting to see what, you know, that things have changed a little bit. We'll talk about it in the show, um, you know, how things are going on at the studio. Um, so we'll talk about that. But, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a fun weekend. I got to see my buddy Greg Pick. Um, and, um, Devin, um, Dr. Devin, and then I got to meet some new people and it's always fun. You know, it's always fun to get recognized and when people have seen the show. So thank you to, to the group of folks that were standing outside Matt's class, getting ready to go in. I think it was Matt, either Matt or Hannah. And, um, all was like, oh my God, that's the face behind the voice. So watch us on YouTube. I mean, you can get to see the face <laughs> every week then, but it was really sweet. And, um, I really yeah, someone, appreciate um, everybody. Someone messaged me over the weekend on Insta that they met you and they said you were kind of mean to them in line. I was mean to them. Right? Yeah, I was definitely mean to everybody. <laughs> they, said, they said you were sweet. They said you were a sweetheart. Oh, that's so I sweet. I can't that's remember somebody... off the top of my head who she, uh, what her name was. But um, Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, so it's always fun. It's always fun too and, and people are so appreciative. So, yeah, so shout out to all of those that said hi. And, um, it was, it was, I have to say, it's always puts a smile on my face because we have fun doing this for you guys. So when it's appreciated, um, you feel loved. So, um, thank you for that. Um, and how about you? You had a good week other than it being hot? Everything good in Michigan? Uh, Gotten a lot of time in the, the pillow cave doing, um, a nice mix of row, strength, boot camp. Uh, I've been mixing it up this week and, and the, in our house we're watching the Harry Potter movies right now so that's where oh, nice. that's where we're at in terms of uh, streaming content so we're on all the right. final ja- we're getting all Jackson all into Harry Potter so next will be you know we're watching the movies first the next will we'll read the books but we're on the last oh, that's awesome. movie so uh, yeah he's very much invested in it right into now it. totally oh, that's sucked awesome. into yeah, it my- yeah my kids were obsessed. I mean, the, the big, the bigger, the older two actually were, were obsessed. I mean, they were huge Harry Potter fans um, and big readers. So yeah, definitely have him read the books too because I think they're they're so cool. They're so cool. Yeah, for All sure, right, folks. Well, we have a very very long show today. There is tons to talk about. So um, before we get started with the news, we always like to remind you how you can keep up to date with all of our content across all of our platforms. Every episode is recorded and released on our YouTube channel. Just hit the subscribe button at the bottom right-hand side of the um, 
a video and hit the notify button so that you never miss an episode. Yep. And you can also listen to us if you are on the go. We're on all podcast platforms. Just search Pillow Buddy TV to find us there. And uh, please leave us a review. We love to get the feedback from our listeners and viewers. And um, we'd love to read some of those five-star reviews on the show from time to time. So keep those coming. Definitely. And of course, folks, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, threads. Um, just search for Pillow Body and like or follow us on those platforms for all of the latest news. And now, John, let's get on with the show. First, let's do a rundown of the latest Pillow news. All right. So... We've had a recent price drop uh, on the Peloton Shred and the Rower. So on the 21st of July, Peloton quietly lowered the price of both the Tread and Row devices. Um, so these are not sale prices. These are just permanent fixed prices now, um, both of them. The Peloton Shred was lowered to $29.95 U.S. dollars. Uh, previously, it was $34.95, so it was a drop of 500 bucks. And then the row was lowered in price to the same amount of $2,995. Um, it had previously uh, cost $3,195. So it was a price drop of $200 there. Unchanged, though, was the price of the Peloton bike, bike plus, and guide. That hasn't been affected. Um, if you have purchased your Peloton tread or row in the last 30 days, you should definitely contact Peloton customer support to see about uh, getting a price match, a price adjustment, um, or you could be eligible for a free return to the 30 day, you know, try before you buy um, policy. If you have to go that route, um, if you have that option as well, but the price drop went into effect in U S and Canada. Um, so yeah, I kind of feel like, I definitely feel like I overpaid for my, my rower now since, you know, we were the, we were the first on the block. So that's, uh, that's the price you pay, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it is nice to see. I know that the um, the, U the UK market was a little upset and German market were a bit upset that the pricing hadn't decreased for them. But yeah, um, yeah. I think that this is the, 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 the springboard for the release of the of the, of the, the, the um, Tread Plus. I, I do feel more, more confident that that's going to be Possibly, I mean, this is just pure speculation on my part, but possibly a Christmas, um, a Christmas release for the for the Peloton tread. I think so. Plus for the plus, so we'll see what mm. happens. We'll Christmas see what happens. Miracle. Yeah. One note yeah. on that, Amanda. Yeah. Uh, the last time that John, uh, not John Foley, sorry, Barry McCarthy talked about it, he he was heavily hinting that it probably wouldn't be until 2024. So if we do see it at Christmas, it might be kind of a pre-order situation because he wants to make sure that um, all the existing Tread Pluses out there get the rear guard installed and updated before they start selling new ones. And as we've seen with the uh, bike seat post recall, it can take a minute to get through all of them since some people, you know, aren't going to get their bike seat post until the end of the year. So it might depend on how long it takes them to get through all the existing updates for existing Tread Plus owners. Makes sense. Makes that sense. makes sense. So maybe, yeah, yeah maybe like a, a pre-order for Christmas time to be released in 2024. And again, that was just my speculation. I had heard some rumblings that it was definitely spoken about. And as you said, I mean, he, he said it himself, right? So um was something, but that's good to know. That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. And also uh, Peloton recently uh, teased on social media, some different bike colors um, that could be coming in the future. They had a, uh, a post on social media that simply said in the workshop playing with color. Um, and it included three uniquely covered, uh, uniquely colored Peloton bike pluses. One was a, a rose gold color. And then the other was a neon yellow. And the other one was a, um, a light sky blue color. I really, um, I, I thought one was a white. Was that, is I that think the there light, was a white sky one. blue? I think there was a sky, it was sky blue, off blue. Oh. Um, it wasn't pure white in the picture though. See Sorry. that one looked Sorry. that one looked kind of pure white to me. It's it's funny that it's like one of those um, one of those dress photos. Yes. Like, does it look <laughs> purple or black? Uh, but yeah, or the, we're all the one just that colorblind. looked closest to white. Yeah, the one that looked closest to white looked super clean. I really liked um, I really liked the finish on that one. But yeah, it would be kind of cool to see. 
to see some different colors out there. I know some uh, some comments were like it would be nice if there was a you know you could wrap your bike. If there was a wrap option. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. I have to tell you, I I wasn't impressed by it. I I, <laughs> I I didn't like them. I didn't. I just I you know I I I don't know. I kind of I actually thought it was a joke when I first saw it being posted. I thought it was like one of these prank things, and then I saw that Peloton had posted it, so I figured, oh, maybe not. But um, no, I don't know. For me, it's like I like the way my gym looks, where everything's black and red. And, Keep it uniform, you know, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. So maybe a red one. I can't. Tri- yeah, I mean that could be kind of cool, but. Um, all right. Well, at the top of the show, I was telling you guys about how much I'm loving suits. So um, Peloton Entertainment, which we shared with you, um, gosh, less than a month ago, is already receiving a redesign with Netflix now appearing as a new top-level option for some users. So previously, Netflix was quietly tested on Peloton, but users had to navigate through several option screens to find the app section on their Peloton um, bike, tread, or row to access it. Now, some users are seeing a prominent Netflix option within Peloton Entertainment with the subtitle, um, Stream TV Shows, Movies, Documentaries, and More. Uh, the Peloton Entertainment section has also been redesigned. Um, so previously, all available options were listed once um, users clicked into entertainment. Now users have a top-level option for Netflix, and all other providers are behind a, kind of like a second menu area labeled More Providers which is described as access content from a variety of streaming services. So that's where you'd find your, you know, like Prime or, or um, uh, YouTube, etc. cetera. Um, so this, this area currently gives users the option, as I said, for YouTube TV. Um, and it's presumed that Amazon Prime TV would be listed there once, it, once it's returned. Um, the interface for Netflix is slightly different than that for YouTube TV and Amazon Prime Video. Um, with Netflix, the class metrics are displayed on the right-hand side of the screen. So where the controls are to start and stop the class, a bar across the bottom of the screen controls the video itself, allowing users to jump to the next episode, control playback, payback um, speed, turn and turn on subtitles, um, et cetera. Uh, the update is not yet rolling out to all members, which I am very frustrated about because I do not have it yet. Um, <laughs> so I truly would have loved it instead of sitting on my, on my butt and watching suits. I could be watching it on one of my, uh, you know, one of my devices. But those, um, those who currently have Peloton Entertainment, um, for most people, they still only have that YouTube TV as an option. Um, now, I remember you told me, John, you had the YouTube TV as an option, correct? Yes, yes. And we, we have YouTube TV, which we love. Um, I checked okay. the, I checked the rower and the tread on Wednesday and the Netflix option was there. On, it was um, there. Okay. On the rower and the okay. tread, yeah. Folks, I, are didn't, I didn't sign in and use it, but it's there now. Yeah, folks are able to access Netflix directly by checking. You can check their um, the apps on the, on the Peloton devices. So, um, but some people who don't have Peloton Entertainment at all um, have been able to access it through the apps. So, um, so yeah, so that's kind of interesting. I think that's definitely. I mean, I know that Mark was when he heard me talking about this. He was like all over it. I mean, that's totally up his alley. Um, to be able to watch a show on Netflix while he's on the just trip. To do, just to just do his own thing. Yeah. Just to do his own thing. He's not a huge one for the class, you know, a class modality type Class thing. structure. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm excited for that to, to roll out. So hopefully we'll get to see that um, sooner rather than later. And then Peloton. Hey, um, Amanda. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Were you, did you check the app section um, of your device to see if you have it? You know what, um, Chris, I did not. Because there's a not. lot of people who it's not in entertainment, but they're able okay. to go into their app section and find it and load it, even if they don't have the entertainment data at all. All right, um, I'm going to go so do that get, then. So to get to that, you just tap settings at the top right, then device settings, then apps. And there's a list of like 20 or so apps on there. And a lot of people are seeing Netflix. You can click it, open it, and start using Netflix. And then would you have to do it each time like that? 
You do, but it's three clicks, okay. so it takes okay. two seconds. So until okay. they roll it out more widely, it's worth checking. It's a nice Definitely. workaround if it's there. Definitely, yeah. yeah. I'm going to go check that out, go check that later and, and, and have a check. So that's awesome. Thanks, Chris. That's great. That's great. Yeah, and one other, um, one other quick note on it is that um, it's definitely still a beta, but the unlike the um, YouTube TV and when they had it Amazon, for some reason the heart rate's not integrated. So even though it's recording your speed, your stats, and all the other stuff, for some reason it's not doing heart rate. So just be aware of that when you're using it right now. Sounds good. I wonder if that's going to come, you know, that'll come in time, maybe once they get up, you know, work out all the kinks. I imagine it will, you know, it's a work in progress and it's probably, you know, people are, would rather do Netflix without heart rate than not do it at all. Yeah. So get it out there and it, let people start using it. Exactly. Exactly. All right. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. So another quick note, Peloton are also testing a small user interface, interface update that um, makes the just me view. So you know how when you, if you want to kind of just look at your statistics and what you've been doing, now that's an option um, on the leaderboard um, that's more accessible. So just me, it, it's not new. We all know that you can kind of go in there and you can get it, but for, for some people are showing, um, and hopefully if you're seeing it on YouTube, on YouTube you'll be able to see the um, the schematic and the, the pick that Chris um, we got to Chris, but it now is accessed within the all-time leaderboard section um, by you know by filtering just me. So the new sorry no the new location places the just me view as a heading option. So previously you could get it in the you know the all filtering. Now you can actually get it as a heading option at the top of the leaderboard main menu alongside all time and here now. So it just makes it easier for users to switch back and forth between the different, yeah, the different views. Um, everyone who has ever taken a class would be in there. Um, those who are taking the class at that very moment um, and then just themselves. Um, so yeah, so, so when using the just me view, the leaderboard will show your date when the class was previously taken, the metrics shown, you know, as your, um, output, um, at the same point in the time of the class, um, that you are taking. Um, so yeah, so some members have reported seeing, you know, seeing that I did not see that. I looked for that today when I was on, was on the tread and I did not, you know, did not see that, but that's definitely one that, I know I've gone back to every now and again. I'm not a huge one to take a class, you know, over again, but occasionally if it's one that I have done before, I do like to go and see if I've improved and what I've done. I know for some people it's a big, a big deal. So hopefully that'll roll out soon for everybody. Cool. And we've also had a maintenance pop-up reminder for folks that are on the Peloton tread, uh, reminding them about loose cables. So the, um, the little picture that Chris Lewis sent me, um, one has, uh, it talks about ensuring that the deck power cord is attached and has enough slack for the tread to um, fully incline if you raise it. And then um, the other reminder is uh, to ensure that the, the touch screen, the cable going into the tablet is um, plugged in firmly into the middle part. Um, as they said, um, if your tread unexpected, unexpectedly slows or stops or your touchscreen resets, please review um, these two, you know, following um, instructions that it, you know, could be a possible loose cable. So uh, something to keep in mind for anyone on the Peloton tread. And then Chris Lewis, I think you wanted to talk about a little update with the Peloton rower. Yeah, and one final note on those loose cables. If you find the cable going into the back of your a tablet is loose, they're actually offering a free, they're calling it a bracket of some sort to make sure that they stay tight and it doesn't wiggle loose. So if you're having, you know, the monitor resetting and being loose, you can get a free replacement part from Peloton for that one. Nice. Nice. Yeah, and then uh, for the Peloton Row, they've rolled out a new feature this week that's called the Pace Target Distribution Graph. And what it is, is it's basically telling you how long you stayed in the target zone the instructor called out. If you've never taken a road class, they don't call out an exact pace or metrics like they do on the bike or the tread. Instead, they call out a target zone of easy, moderate, challenging, and max. And they call one of those four zones out for the entire class, and you're supposed to stay on that based on your personal, uh, personal pace target. 
before you didn't really know how well you stayed in the the target zone they were calling out. But now after class in the bottom left of the screen, there's a new graph that pops up showing you the four zones. And for every stroke you took, it shows you on the graph where whether you were in that zone too fast or too slow. Um, so yeah, that's in the bottom left. You can click into the details afterwards to get an even more detailed view, and it gives you an overall score of how you did the entire class. Like 81% of your strokes, you stayed in the target zone. So that's just a new little guide for you to kind of, you know, if you're wanting to follow their call out, see how well you did with that. All right. Well, don't shoot the messenger, but PSNY will be closed for a full week from Monday, August the 28th, through Monday, September the 4th, which does, in fact, include the um, U.S. Labor Day holiday weekend. Um, the closure is for regular maintenance, and as a result, there will be no live classes during this period. It was announced via a header notification on the studio booking site and on the Peloton Studios Instagram story. Typically, members would have been able to book classes for the Labor Day weekend six weeks in advance, which was this past um, Thursday. But um, due to the closure, no live classes um, were, in fact, available for booking. Uh, during the closure, uh, Peloton has said that they're expected um, they are expecting to release a number of pre-recorded classes straight to the on-demand library. Um, additionally, a robust on-course schedule will likely be provided. Um, so this is the second major closure at PSNY in 2023, with the previous one being um, for the Memorial Day holiday. It was over the 29th of uh, May till like the 4th of June, I think it was. Um, so this is the second one. But... Remember, folks, that Peloton Studios London will also be closed for renovation and maintenance from August 7th through the 22nd of September, meaning that there will be no live classes from the UK during that time. So, um, again, an opportunity for you to go back to, you know, material that you maybe have missed and um, especially with people being on holiday and going off, you know, maybe you've missed some stuff, but you can utilize that week to, um, there certainly is tons of material. I will say, though, um, in, in defense of, of some people, because I, I know that some people do get quite upset about it. This past week, yeah. Maddie was, Maddie was on holiday and absolutely he's deserved his holiday but i love my wednesday walk and talks and it just wasn't the same not doing it live and not being on a leaderboard with like everybody you know it's just different so i get people being frustrated it doesn't bother me as much as it bothers others but um it does you know it does bother some and then in some other studio news peloton has been testing a new process for the order in which members enter the studio for in-person classes. And this, for what we understand, is just at PSNY at this time. Um, it did take place this past weekend um, for some bike and tread classes, and I was there to witness it, so I got to see firsthand what they had done. But um, there was a difference in the entry um, of the order of which, you know, how folks go getting into the studio. So previously, the audio was, the order was VIPs. So such as instructors invited guests. Um, then members celebrating milestones, studio first timers, and then everybody else. The new order being tested allows studio first timers to actually enter before those celebrating milestones. So basically <clears throat> allowing members who have never been to a class at PSNY priority entry over these celebrating milestones. And Peloton's explanation for this was that it was a decision based on feedback from members because those visiting the studio for the first time may just need some more time and assistance to ensure that they're set up properly for class and don't feel like they're rushing at the last minute because they have to, you know, adjust their seat or fix the bike or maybe get, you know, get something, you know, and gives them a little bit extra time um, and just feel comfortable and secure when they, you know, in there, especially for the bike, you know, especially, especially for the bike. Um, the adjustment could also have an additional side effect um, in that it would almost guarantee 
different faces on camera during class. So I didn't even think about it from that perspective, although I would probably think if you were a first timer, you'd want to be at the back of the studio and not necessarily in the front. But it, it obviously will give those folks an opportunity to pick a bike, you know, in camera. Um, the booking process is still extremely competitive, as everybody knows. Um, and most classes now in New York and London typically are fully booked within minutes um, or even seconds, um, you know, of going live and the queue filling, you know, close to an hour before classes go live. So this new entry order won't prevent those members who most likely live in the New York area from being in studio, but it will lessen the chances that they will be on camera. So for those folks now, that are bothered, yeah. Now for the process, since you, you were there this past weekend, last week, to see it, is it just for the cycling studio with the, the different colored Entrade. cards? Yes, It's not Entrade. for any of the other studios except the cycling, right? So, yeah, I mean, I just saw it for Tread and Bike, um, but they did change. Oh, for Tread. You know, they, yeah, yeah, they did it for Tread too. They did it for Tread oh, too, okay. too, so folks could go in ahead of time. If you were first time, and there was one girl in one of my Tread classes that was there for the very first time, um, and she... So for the you know, cycling she, studio, is the PA saying for anyone that has a, a what, red card or... Correct, a, correct. So that's yep, the first, the red, okay. The red card, um, the red card is, is folks that are going in for the first, yeah, for the first time. And I've so, also and heard that they've discouraged against forming a line. They've been trying to sort of break that up. Well, and people just, because people are going in, you know, now. Like camping out outside the door. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> Especially in New York, um, where the, where the, where the bike studio is, as you know, there are lockers that are right there and people are kind of lining up in front of the lockers. So it makes it hard for people yeah. to access the lockers if they're, you know, not in that class, et cetera. So I'm um, definitely, um, I'm, I'm curious to see. I mean, there's a lot of teething things that they still have to figure out and work out. No question. Um, and I get it. It is frustrating. I mean, look, I have, I've been fortunate enough. I was there two weeks ago. I got in again, you know, this past weekend and I'm going just for one day in two weeks time, but, um, I'm not there every day. And I have to be honest with you. I was chatting with somebody else about this. Um, I don't know how people do it. I don't know how some of these folks that are there every it's a lot weekend of work. and are there. I was, I was just there for two days. I was shattered. I mean, my legs were so sore on Monday. I, and I just said to myself, I don't know how some of these people do four or five classes, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, and are okay. So again, I mean, that's just a personal thing. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it's just, the whole thing is just crazy. The whole thing is just, it is just crazy how everybody is just so fixated on what's happening and getting into the studio and what they're doing. Um, and then just switching gears a little bit, uh, PSL news. So the London studio is celebrating International Friendship Day. Um, it's on Sunday, July the 30th, um, with a special class, um, led by Justin Thompson Rupal. Uh, the class was open to in-studio participants on an invite-only basis. So selected members received an invitation to this 45-minute 80s walk. So that was really, really cool. Um, the only downside, it was at 7 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> but mm. if you're at Justin and you're okay to walk that early, then 7 a.m., I guess, is fine. Um, but what was really cool about it was that it allowed members to either forward the invitation to a friend, so just to one friend, or book two spots under their own account and bring a friend along with them. So it was a nice way of doing like kind of like a buddy system. And if somebody was maybe apprehensive about going to the studio or felt uncomfortable being there by themselves, it was a nice opportunity to go with somebody. And um, seven a, it was 7 a.m. as Chris Sunday Giles morning. just put yeah, in this morning. Morning. 7 a.m. U.S. Morning. time, midday U.K. time. Oh, was it? Uh, okay, I yeah. read that wrong. My apologies. I thought it was 7 a.m. U.K. time. You're quite right. It was 12 it was noon. It was noon. Um, thank you, Chris Giles. Um, it was noon. Oh, that's a little bit better. I feel a bit better about them. <laughs> uh, but it was today. So, um, so this Sunday is when folks um, got to do that. Thanks for the correction. 
We had the Peloton Barbie movie series kick off this past weekend. Um, it began on Saturday, July 29th, and it's running through Thursday, August 3rd. Um, there's a mix of live classes and some pre-recorded on-demand drops. A uh, total of seven classes across five modalities, including content in Spanish and German. Uh, first off, uh, Cali taught a 30-minute Peloton Barbie glutes and leg strength. That was on Saturday the 29th. Uh, then we had a 20-minute Peloton Barbie ride with Camilla Ramon in Spanish on the 29th as well. That dropped on demand. Uh, a 30-minute on Barbie run with Jeffrey McEachern, which was in German. Um, that is happening on August 1st. Uh, and then 20-minute Barbie shadow boxing with Kendall. That's going to be dropping on demand on August 3rd at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And then also Adrian Williams has a 10 minute Peloton Barbie stretch that's dropping on demand on August 3rd. And then uh, rounding it out, Marcel is teaching a 30 minute Peloton Barbie run on August 3rd at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Have you seen, have you seen the Barbie movie yet? I did. did? (laughs) I took my, I took my 82 year old mother to see it. (laughs) Um, Yeah, it was interesting. It was interesting. Definitely. Um, you know, I I think, yes, I, I, am still trying to kind of wrap my head around it all. Um, but it was cute. And I think there was a, there was definitely a message, which I loved. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I could say much more of that. I I was interested. I did find it amusing that Peloton put together a whole Barbie, um, you know, artist or movie series. I did find that to be interesting. Um, yeah. and Selena Samuela was kept very far away from that. She was very vocal on her feelings about Barbie at the movie and said she wanted to have oh, nothing yeah? to do. Yes. <laughs> oh, right, right. Like, I must have missed that. I don't that. have anything to do with that. Yeah. She had it <laughs> I like, on, I like on that. her thread. I like that she was vocal about, about it, um, she not was. being into it. She, uh, was, I like that. she said, I wasn't popular in school and the whole thing just kind of doesn't go for me and don't ever call just me Barbie. Just not her vibe. And, no. Yeah. And, and it was quite cute though, because, um, uh, in Bex's class on Saturday, she did, she looked too gorgeous and she was wearing a pink top and she said, Oh my God, I think I look like Barbie and I'm going to go for this. And I kind of like that people are referring to me as Barbie. I'm not taking it as a negative after seeing the movie or, you know, something to that effect. So it was interesting to see the different dynamics of what the instructors were saying, but they both put mm. it out there. So, um, yeah. yeah. Well, we ended, the three of us saw it. Jackson liked it. Um, I, I loved, I, a few days before that, I saw Oppenheimer. Yes. Um, I saw it opening night. I, I have to go see it again, though. I, I need to see it in 70 millimeter IMAX, um, just because of the way it was filmed. But I also need to see it again because I saw it at 10 p.m. on opening night on le- last Thursday. And at my theater, you know, they have like nice, comfortable leather reclining seats. Like I was fighting. Like the, the, the drowsiness. Yeah. yeah, I was catching. And, and that movie is just constant uh, dialogue. There's so yes. much talking um, and it's three hours long. So yeah, don't see it at 10 p.m. at night. Um, interesting. So I definitely, interesting. Need yeah, it's, to, I it's, definitely need to watch it again. It's for but this it was, weekend. It was amazing. What I did it's not this you know, doze yeah. off. What I didn't doze off for was, was very uh, stunning visually. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited to see it. Definitely excited to see it. And then uh, other artist series, Motley Crue. Uh, the series began uh, this past July, Thursday, July 27th. It includes seven classes across four modalities, including one in German. Um, and it's also Tobias Heinz's first English class. He has a 10-minute warm-up run, Motley Crue warm-up run in English, um, before teaching his full live run in German, which is interesting. Um, but nice that he got a, a chance to teach something in English. Uh, but we have, yeah, his 10 minute warm up run in uh, English, which dropped on demand on July 27th. Um, and then Tobias had a 30 minute Motley Crue run in German um, later that morning, July 27th at 1130 AM Eastern time. And Sam Yo had a 30 minute Motley crew ride on the afternoon of July 27th. And there's a 10 minute Motley crew arms and light weights with Kendall tool that um, also went down on July 27th. Logan on the same day as well. He taught a 20 minute Motley crew chest and back strength. 
And Andy, on the evening of July 27th at 7 p.m. Eastern time, he taught a 30-minute uh, Motley Crew run. And then rounding it out, Matt Wilpers had a 20-minute Motley Crew row, um, which he did live also on the evening of July 27th at 7.30 Eastern time. Awesome. Yeah, it doesn't appeal to me at all, but I guess there's something for everybody. <laughs> you an 80s, an 80s hairband girl? <laughs> I am not a, nope, not an 80s rock, rock um, fan. Maybe kick, kick and, start and, my heart doesn't get you going on the tread, get you, get you nope. sprinting or pedaling? Nope. <laughs> all right. Nope. To each his own. Not a, to each his own. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, we did see this past week, though, a whole lot of new classes drop on audio for outdoor artist series. So so there was a 45-minute ABBA walk with Jess King, a 20-minute Imagine Dragons walk with Marcel, Marcel, um, Marcel Dinkins, Thank a 20-minute um, Kai, Kaigo, is that how you pronounce it? I think it's Kaigo, Kaigo run. Kaigo, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Rebecca Kennedy did that one. There was a 30-minute Usher walk plus run with Kristen Ferguson. Uh, a 30-minute Miley Cyrus run with Olivia Amato and a 30-minute Red Hot Chili Peppers run with Adrian Williams. So for those <laughs> folks that love to be outside, um, there's some nice fun, from, you know, new yeah, fun nice, stuff. Nice mix of different To be able to, to be able to do it. Although, as we said at the top of the show, with the weather in the, on the East Coast, certainly, um, you West Coasters can maybe enjoy uh, some of these outdoor stuff because it's too hot to be outside and working out, that's for sure. Um, and then, folks, it's a new week, which means another round of class library maintenance. Um, so classes filmed between November the 14th to the 30th of 2019 were removed this past week. Um, it resulted in the removal of um, just over two weeks' worth of content. However, there were 22 classes that were spared in this um, library maintenance. Um, some of them included... Um, some artist series, Jess King's experience rides, some Sundays with love rides, certain power zone classes, a long form 30 minute sleep meditation, which I was thrilled about. Um, and then the 2019 Thanksgiving turkey burn content. Also the mm. print ride of German instructor Irene Schultz, who is um, no longer on the Peloton platform. And yet that one was saved. So I well, think that, that was actually that she, very interesting. Exactly. Yeah, she's been exactly. she's been gone over a year, well over a year now. Well over a year. So um so yes, I think now as it's kind of getting closer to when kind of COVID hit, they're definitely saving 2020. some more popular yeah. yeah, some more popular stuff. Well, while we're on the subject of purges, there's an interesting story about a class that was previously purged that has now returned to the on-demand library. So earlier last week, we, um, you know, we had shared that several classes that had been removed um, had since been restored. And it turns out one in particular was Anna Greenberg's 20-minute sleep meditation, um, which was personally requested by Anna after she received um, some outreach from a Peloton member. Um, that Peloton member, who goes by the leaderboard name Jules Mom of Girls, um, shared her story with us. Um, her seven-year-old autistic daughter has listened to that specific sleep meditation of Anna's with um, her mom every night for nearly a year, and they were, you know, obviously disappointed to see that it had been purged. Um, and they tried a different sleep meditation; it just didn't have the same effect on her daughter, and they were struggling um, following, you know, the meditation's removal from the library. Um, so initially. She reached out to Peloton to explain the situation, um, didn't hear back. She decided to reach out directly to Anna, and she did respond and, you know, was tremendously empathetic um, to her and understanding and said that she would contact Peloton. And just two days later, um, followed up to say to her that the class had been restored and was now back available in the on-demand library. Isn't that the most amazing story? 
I, I'm very, I mean, well, Anna is just a darling, so I'm not surprised she did something like that. And I'm good for Peloton for listening. And I think, look, they get so many messages that it probably just got buried. You know, she maybe just right. did it on Instagram and her message directly to Peloton probably just got bar- buried. Um, but Anna is very responsive to her DMs. And, um, wow, good for Peloton for doing that. That honestly, I, I almost have called shivers. I think that's an amazing story. So good. I got to check yeah, out this. I got to see this. Um, I got to check out the sleep meditation now. Uh, I guess it's from 2000, I, 2019. You know what? I did, but I think I'm going to just listen to it during the day because I did actually go and listen to it and I fell asleep. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> and yeah, what the whole thing was all about. But I do like those longer ones. Yeah. I think we spoke about it before. We spoke about Ross's 30 minutes. He just actually, in, in, on, an, on an added note of that, for those folks that do like the longer sleep meditations, Ross did just drop a brand new 30 minute um, just this uh. past week. So those, yeah, those is are it audio, audio only. It's audio only. And, um, yeah. but it isn't an, a, a new, a brand new 30 minutes. So if you're tired of his old ones, then this is a nice one. Um, for you, I did it, I did it this week and it was beautiful. I mean, I didn't get, get to hear all 30 minutes, but from what I did hear, it was great. Um, it did, it did the trick. It did the trick. It did. It did. Of course, I teased him about that. He goes, oh, my God, Amanda, everybody uses that line on me. Because I said, you know, <laughs> I will sleep with you every night because I hear that all yeah, the time. Yeah. But he was so lovely about it. Even, you know, he didn't, like, roll his eyes. You know, like, some some of them may have, like, rolled their eyes. Or he was so, like, lovely about it when I said it to him. He's just, he's such a lovely guy. Anyway, Tenjin Gears, who's also lovely and gets to do a long haul um, trip is today. Um, this is so exciting for her. She is headed to Australia for a meet and greet, um, event, which is on August the 12th. Um, this event is part of Peloton's partnership with the City to Surf Race. It's a popular annual race in Sydney. Um, it's going to take place. The meet and greet will take place at the City to Surf Expo from 10 to 12 um, noon local time. Um, there is no requirement to RSVP um, in advance, um, and it's open to those participating in, supporting, or anybody that's kind of just curious um, about the City to Surf race. So Peloton is, in fact, a sponsor of the race, um, and from what we understand, we'll most likely have a booth set up at the expo where attendees will most certainly be able to find um, Tunde there. So that's really, really exciting um, for those folks. You know, cool. So anybody that's listening from Australia, um, you know, it, it's just a wonderful, a wonderful opportunity to get to meet another instructor. Um, as part of the event, though, John, which I think is actually really amazing, Peloton will fundraise for Beyond Blue. This is a non-for-profit organization that provides mental health support and awareness. So Beyond Blue's 24-7 support service provides immediate counseling, advice, and referrals by trained mental health professionals to anybody in need. It will actually be Tunde's second meet and greet in, in as many months. Um, as she was recently in Houston um, with Ross the Dick's Rainbow. Sporting Goods, yeah, right? Yeah. She did that meet or greet. And yep. rumor has it, H-I-H-F, that she is also expected to be one of the instructors at Peloton on tour in Chicago. So I Never. just heard that this past week. So if you are a Tunde fan, um, there are lots of opportunities to get to um, get to see her, which is really cool. Nice. Yeah. Well, and shifting gears a little bit, in a recent Instagram Ask Me Anything with Matt Wilpers, um, he specifically talked about shoe recommendations for on the Peloton rower. Um, and I... I I think he's he's covered this question a couple times on some Insta AMAs because um, I noticed I noticed him cover you know answering this question a while back, um, but he did give some good guidance when it comes to rowing shoes. He went on to um, explain in his answer to the question that on an actual crew boat, rowers they just wear socks when they get on board, and they the there's already shoes built in into the actual oh, wow. rower. Um, 
which basically ensures, as he says, a nice connection and energy transfer between your body and the boat. Um, and he, he goes on to explain that the best way to mimic that crucial body boat connection on an indoor rowing machine is to wear a thin sole shoe. So he notes that he loves strength. He loves to wear strength shoes on the rower. And he specifically mentioned the uh, Nike Metcon uh, shoes for using on the Peloton rower or any rower for that matter. Um, and it wasn't like a, an ad or endorsement. I don't think he has any kind of brand partnership deal with Nike. Um, but I also, do you remember when a few years back, like Peloton had sneakers? Yes. They had you like them, the, right? You- yeah, I have a, I have a couple of pairs of them, but I use, I use those now just for the rower. Um, cause they're pretty thin, they're pretty thin sole, but they're perfect. And I just sort of, I slip them on and off. Um, yeah. that's what I, that's what I use. And I know somebody had mentioned that they saw a lot of them on, um, some different sites, you know, for sale for, for cheap. Um, I forget what, what site you know, it was like on shop, shop, Shopify or, you know, okay. one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not not eBay or reseller uh, reseller sites, but um, yeah, one of the other ones. But uh, no, that's what I use. And uh, um, and speaking of eBay, uh, Peloton is now on eBay in the United States. Um, once again, they're expanding their relationship with eBay, and this time, um, starting July twenty fifth, just recently, uh, they're selling refurbished bike pluses on the website on, on Peloton's eBay storefront. Um, they published a new support space, a uh, new support page containing additional information. Um, the refurbished bike plus, it comes with the standard one year, uh, Peloton limited warranty, but also it includes an additional, um, year. Well, it comes with a two year eBay standard warranty. So basically you get an additional year after your Peloton manufacturer warranty expires through eBay's insurance um, provider uh, via Allstate. Um, one thing to note, it's only, uh, they're only selling refurbished bike pluses on eBay. So they're not brand new bikes. They're not just regular Peloton bikes. Um, and it's the same price, $19.95, $1,995 as uh, they're offering on the Peloton web- website. So it's basically $500 yeah. less than a brand new Peloton bike plus. Uh, but just right. another way that they're just, they're getting, you know, the brand out, out there, there, getting more Correct. options. Yeah. Correct. So if someone's I, I on like the I eBay, sure. if someone's on eBay, they can at least see it. And then, you know, it's, it's a way of, yeah. Yeah. It's just, exposure. you know, raising the brand. It's not like, um, when I first, when I saw Chris Lewis post the, the article about it, I wasn't sure if they were going to, if you're really like bidding, you know, if like you could like Got get us. a good deal, but it's just, it's just a buy it now option. It's, it's Got not it. like a bit. Like eBay has the auction style listings, you know, where you can bid on it. In this case, it's just, you know, a buy it now option. You're not going to be bidding and trying to outbid somebody for a great deal. It's the same, same price for each listing that they have on there for it. Got it. Yeah. We haven't spoken about a lawsuit for a while, but a new class action lawsuit has in fact been filed against Peloton by plaintiff Julie Jones, alleging that Peloton customers were subject to eavesdropping and data recording by a third party without their consent during conversations on the Peloton website chat. So the lawsuit claims that conversations um, on the widget, that widget, were analyzed by a third party software tool to determine the likelihood of the person chatting purchasing a product from Peloton. The lawsuit filed in a California federal court alleges that this practice violates the California Invasion of Privacy Act, which prohibits video wiretaping and eavesdropping of electronic communications without the consent of all parties involved. The complaint states that Peloton's actions are contrary to industry norms and the legitimate expectations of consumers. Um, this, uh, this jo- Ms. Jones alleges that Peloton covertly embedded a third party's code into its chat feature that automatically records and creates transcripts of all such conversations. The third party referred to as Drift is alleged to secretly intercept eavesdrop upon, interpret, analyze, store, and use transcripts of chat communications with unsuspecting website visitors. 
Peloton did go ahead and update their privacy policy on July the 21st, which now includes a line about the chat service support that was not there previously, stating our live chat service provider records information submitted in the chatbot as well as any dialogue with member support. However, there is Mm. no confirmation that this privacy policy update is directly related to the new lawsuit. I guess we'll wait and see what happens there, but an interesting lawsuit nonetheless. Yeah, I always notice when I'm on the studio booking page, for example, you always get that like bottom message sort of pop ups like, how can I help you today? And it's like, it's kind of annoying. Annoying. I I have to close it. I have to close it out because it, it covers up a lot of the bottom of that screen when I'm scrolling through the class. Uh, I feel exactly listings. the same way. Yeah, I feel exactly the same way. Yes, I, I find it very annoying. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. Yeah, I wonder how much they're listening there. Well, uh, the little words Peloton Apparel, the the bracelet uh, collaboration with Little Words. We did have a restock um, just this past uh, the morning of July twenty fifth. Um, there's a lot of them. I'm just looking on the apparel website right now, and there's a lot of bracelets that are still in stock, but mostly it seems like all of the large slash XL sizes are all sold out. Uh, but it looks like there's plenty of other of the bracelets that are still available in small and medium. So, um, if you haven't had a chance to, um, scoop up any of the bracelets, especially the first time around when they quickly sold out, uh, looks like there's still some stock remaining. Not sure how much will be left by the time. Yeah, what I found interesting, John, was that they restocked, didn't bring in new things. So, for example, someone like me. New quotes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, somebody like me, who's like a big Club Husky fan, there was no like Club Husky. There's no, it was interesting how not all the group, you know, not everything's there for everybody. I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean, you've got, what, 13 different different ones show up, Together We Go Far, Baibu, Cody's. Yes to you, Leanne. Yeah, you've got the same daycare, Alex. Stay in the fight. Stay in the fight. That's Kendall, right? Yeah, I believe so. Benny's is yeah. there. Cue the confetti. Um, but yeah, but Pause, there, was, there were yeah. quite a few that weren't. So I did find that was interesting. And talking about apparel, there is a new milestone apparel collection um, that was launched. It's introducing new colors and milestone tier levels. So the collection was officially announced also this past week on July the 21st. It includes six new colors from the Terry crew neck style celebrating different milestones. So now you get 100, 500, 1,000, 2,500, and 5,000. So those are new. The 2,500 mm-hmm. and the 5,000 tiers are new additions that have not been available, um, you know, in the past. Um, the initial apparel thing, I think, was was launched back in December of 2022, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I believe that that's when they were, but now they've included, they've, you know, added 2,500 and five five thousand, which are you know real milestones. <laughs> you know, three thousand. <laughs> the others, um, we've heard people comment on that before. So those are real milestones. Well, um, ones on the fifties. Right. We don't, we know you're not going to find one. We're not going to find one there. Um, each milestone crew neck is priced at $98. So I think it's a kind of hefty fee. And um, the collection also includes products from the original milestone collection, as well as the four inch and eight inch shorts that match the uh, mm. crew neck colors. Um, so that was, you know, that was kind of interesting. In 2023, at the beginning of this year, um, folks, if you don't remember, Peloton had announced that they were discontinuing their free Century Club t-shirt program, which folks were able to get complimentary to all access members, um, after, you know, completing your, your 100th workout. Um, The new collection can be purchased via the Peloton um, apparel website. We also saw a new summer drop um, of apparel stuff that was launched this past week as well, I believe on Thursday. So, um, you know, they're continuing to, you know, launch new stuff. I'm very upset that the new uh, Pick Your Palette wasn't restocked. 
I had thought that it was going to be restocked um, last week, but I haven't seen that. Mm. So, um, yeah, they still have pieces at the studio in New York, um, but very, li- very limited. Mostly guy stuff. All the women's stuff was gone. No women's stuff. I think there was only black tanks, uh, uh, bra tops, excuse me. But um, I'm upset they haven't restocked that because I definitely missed that boat. I would have loved because it really looks nice. I like the more solid color. Um, so I'm a bit upset that they didn't, they didn't add that in, but, um, yeah, yeah. So that gives you some, um, apparel launches that have um, been made. Um, and then I guess, John, there is lots of instructor in the news. So hopefully we have not put anybody to sleep yet. Let's run through the instructor in the news. Let's go. Yeah. Well, first off, a big congratulations to Jess King and her wife, Sophie Urista, who, um, just announced that they, um, Sophia gave birth to their second child. Um, they named their daughter Afiza Maria Eurista King. She was born on July 15th at 1.08 in the morning, weighing 7 pounds, 13 ounces. Jess and Sophia, they made a, a shared post on Instagram with the announcement accompanied by a video showing parts of Sophia's pregnancy and birthing journey. Uh, birthing journey. Um, prior to that, Jess had given birth to their first child, uh, Lucian Luz in, um, just pretty recently in November of 2022, um, Jess had shared, um, you know, she had shared her last, uh, in her last class, which was, uh, Thursday, July 13th. That was her last ride before maternity leave. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure they're, uh, they got their hands full now. <laughs> they definitely have their hands full. They definitely and no have Robin, their hands I know, full. I know everyone's waiting for, for, you know, Robin's having another, her second kid pretty soon after. Yeah, you know, I, I didn't her know first. when her due date, did you, do you so, remember when her due date was? No, no, me neither. No, but it, it could be, I mean, she's on maternity leave at the moment, so it could be any, yeah. any day now. No, no, no idea there. Um, yeah, well, yeah. congratulations to, to Jess and Sophia. It was quite a, um, graphic video that they um, released. Oh, I didn't, I didn't. Um, was there like, was there birth graphic. canal footage? It was everything. It was oh, clearly um, everything. You can, you can still go and see it. It's on their page. Um, it is um, definitely, it was more than I guess I needed to see. I'm having birth three, three babies. Um, but anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, moving on. So, but I, but I, you know, in all seriousness, huge congrats. And, um, I'm excited to see, I'm sure she'll be just as beautiful because Liz is gorgeous. So I'm looking forward to seeing what, you know, what she looks like. I haven't actually seen any more pictures since those ones that she first released when those, those newborn baby ones are not, not usually very pretty. So I'm um, <laughs> looking forward to see as she, as she grows up. All right. Ben Aldous was in people.com this past week and he shared that he had been diagnosed with melanoma years before his fiance, um, uh, Leanne Hainsby was diagnosed with breast cancer. So Ben shared that his experience with cancer allowed him to support Leanne through her own journey, which she shared with her fans back in January of 2023. Um, ben, for those that are not familiar, was diagnosed with melanoma um, in his early 20s. He was working in finance and teaching fitness on the side when a woman who was just a general practitioner had advised him to get his skin checked after one of his classes. Um, he was diagnosed with stage one melanoma, which was treated um, with a series of surgeries. Um, his diagnosis had a profound impact on his life, which he shared in the article, leading him to actually leave his finance job and move into fitness full time. So it was kind of around um, the same time that Peloton had recruited him um, for the bike, you know, for the bike instructor. Um, but unlike Leanne, um, who was very public about her breast cancer journey, you know, back in January, Ben kept his diagnosis private for about two years. So he never told anybody for those first two years on the platform about what he had gone, you know, what he had gone through. Um, but he praised in this article, he's just such a love. Oh, he's just such a love. He praised Leanne's resilience and strength, noting that her health and wellness habits have improved since her diagnosis, the diagnosis. Um, he said that both um, him and Leanne are now in a good place 
looking forward to planning their wedding and celebrating with their family and friends. Um, just to remind folks, Ben's book, Raise the Bar, is set to go on sale in the U.S. in October of 2023 and I believe in the U.K. in August. So definitely look out for that because I'm sure he will talk about that in there as well. Kind of all these instructor and Cody's book. We're, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to. Chris Lewis is gonna have to do a breakdown of like who, who which instructor has the top selling book. <laughs> who, well, which yeah, instructor gets the biggest book. draw? At has his book too. I, I mean, there are a lot coming out. Emma's got her book. Yeah. And Maddie, Maddie shared that he was writing a book Keep with his mom. Keep on coming. I know. <laughs> um, it's crazy. Good for them. Good for them. Well, Adrian Williams was recently interviewed on People.com. Uh, talking about his surgery and recovery um, that he recently went through because he was off the platform for a while uh, recovering from his elbow surgery. So the uh, the interview was titled uh, Peloton's Adrian Williams on taking an eight-week break to heal after surgery. I did nothing. Um, he, the article says he, he woke up one day earlier uh, this year with his left arm locked at a 90-degree angle and that he said um, he couldn't even get it down. Um, he told the interviewer, he said after getting an MRI scan, he was told that he had developed a bone growth around his joint that was treatable. Um, he said the option was that he could continue to do movement, uh, but he wouldn't be able to move the way he'd like to, or he can opt for surgery. Um, and basically they said, you know, you'll be able to get back to yourself a hundred percent. Um, so he immediately opted to have the surgery. Um, and he also went on to say, he admits he did nothing for most of that time. Uh, he said no running, no movement for six weeks, zero, uh, zilch. He did nothing. And, you know, he came back, um, you know, a hundred percent. Um, yeah, I ran into him this weekend, actually. Um, he was coming out of a strength class and we had a chat. Um, and he asked me how I was doing. It was very sweet. He, he remembered and he knew. And, you know, I said to him, it was very hard coming back in. And I can't imagine him having, you know, this was his livelihood and having to be off and, and he was very sweet and he said exactly that. He said, you know what, Amanda, I did nothing. And he said, and I found stuff that just, you know, made me happy, which was his photography and um, his he said, car. He's very he's into his, his, his BMW, he his racing. He said yeah. that. He said, I would take my car out and I would just drive for hours. He said, I, you know, he loved that. So he was saying that that was something, um, and I don't know if that was in the article or not, but he was, you know, he just said, and he says he feels so strong now. And I said, you know, this was kind of my comeback too. And I felt good that I was, confined, you know, finally coming back, but I couldn't imagine what it was like for him who it's his livelihood and his every day. So, um, yeah, right. that's a great article. Great article. All right. Um, CDE, Christine Derclay, was on a podcast. She was a guest on the self-care unit podcast um, for a special episode focus on mental health. Um, so she, uh, Christine, who is also a decorated competitive track cyclist that we've shared with you in the past, she's a writer and a speaker, um, is known for her word shops, which are centered on editing um, self-talk to be more productive and align with one's life goals. So in the podcast, she shares her life experiences and work, emphasizing the importance of being kinder to oneself. Um, she also discusses her journey with disordered eating, providing a trigger warning for listeners who may find such content, you know, upsetting. She mentioned, though, that she has a free virtual workshop for nurses and healthcare workers that is hosted by thera therapypaid.org um, with Don't Clock Out. Um, it's scheduled for August the 25th at 1 p.m. Eastern. And for anybody that is interested, um, she will randomly select two winners via her Instagram Live. Um, she's doing an event on Friday, August the 4th at 1 p.m. So if anybody is interested in being a part of this workshop, make sure that you are on the Instagram Live on August 4th and have a chance to, you know, win free access to her workshop. Um, the, the podcast episode, episode did provide you know, a, a insightful look at Christine's approach to mental health, self-care, and how she uses her experience to help others. So it was a great one. Great. 
well, a lot of podcast interviews and uh, Hannah Frankson, I haven't, I, I haven't even had a chance to listen to it yet, but she was recently on the podcast Behind the Face of Success, talking all about her background um, and how she um, got into fitness and becoming a fitness instructor with Peloton, but it's on, we'll have it linked on PeloBuddy.com. You can check it out, uh, check it out there. Yeah. And then one more, Bradley Rose. Bradley Rose was on the, uh, another podcast. He's been on a few lately. His was titled Be a Rebel with Bradley Rose, um, from the One Big Thing podcast with Steve Campbell. Um, Bradley shared his inspiring journey. Um, he talks about being an actor before joining Peloton. He talks about his transition from acting to fitness and how he has found a perfect blend of his passions um, at Peloton. He also discusses, which I loved about in this podcast. Um, I mean, I just love listening. I could listen to him forever. But he discussed the importance of community in fitness, which so many of us have found so profound in, you know, in our Peloton journeys. He emphasized um, that Peloton is not just about being alone on a stationary bike, but about being part of a group of friends. So he encouraged people to join live classes, interact with others, and in fact, become part of a community. Um, he highlights the role of social media in fostering the sense of community and allowing him to interact with people from all over the world. And he also shared um, his personal story of, you know, having a stroke four, you know, four years ago. Um, he talks about the challenges that he faced, including the high cost of healthcare in the States. Um, and then the physical and mental recovery process, which one doesn't think about, you know, it's not just about, it's not just about the physical, but it's also the mental to now come back and, of course, go on to be a, you know, to be an instructor. And he's just so eloquent in the way, you know, in the way he talks about that. Um, he says that despite these challenges, he considers himself very fortunate to be able to continue his work at Peloton and be part of a fitness community. And he gave a huge shout out to the, the support he receives from his fan group, which I loved to hear because not many instructors do that. So um, he did say that the Roses rebels um, who view him like their Sherpa um, and find his energy infectious are a great group and kind of encouraged folks that if they enjoy riding with him to make sure that they join, you know, his group. So I did love, you know, love him saying that. That's great. And yeah. And one more podcast interview, Emma Lovewell. I think we might've mentioned she was on this podcast last week, but now it's, it, it, I, I can't recall, but she was recently on the hurdle podcast and she also gave the keynote speech at a travel conference in Dallas. Um, she posted on Instagram with a little um, highlight reel of her quick trip there. She said, quick nine hours in Dallas, Texas, honored to be the keynote speaker at this year's Destinations International Reimagined Convention. Uh, she said, I could talk about wellness and travel all day, but good thing they only gave me 30 minutes. Um, she spoke to a big, uh, massive, you know, conference room. Uh, to 1,400 people from 23 different countries. Um, and, you know, Emma's very well-traveled. I think she her last, most recent trip, I think they were in Italy. Italy, Italy, at yeah. At the, what's that fountain? Um, Trevi, at the Trevi Fountain in Rome. Tre yeah. The Trevi yeah, Fountain, and they, yeah, um, yeah. She and her partner, have, uh, they also recently went to, where was it, Patagonia, uh, yeah, they definitely somewhere travel south, a lot. Somewhere in South America, yeah. They and travel I mean, a lot. And they do, like, they do, you know, they'll, like, like backpack and hike and really, you know, get, they're not just going to some five-star, you know. Right. They make, it, they make it yeah. into an adventure. They, yeah, yes. definitely do that. Um, all right, yeah, which is cool. And then rounding up the instructors in the news is Jess Sims. And she will be participating in a charity basketball game Dribble for Dreams as a team coach. So the event is scheduled for Saturday, August the 19th at Fordham University in the Bronx. Um, Jess will lead the follow-through team, which will compete against the Dream Pick team, which is coached by Johnny Bryant, associate head coach of the New York Knicks. So this event huh. supports the Precious Dreams Foundation, a non-for-profit um, organization 
that provides support to youth in foster care and those experiencing homelessness. And the aim of the event is to raise awareness for these folks and support the foundation in providing them with back to school supplies and comfort items, um, etc. So um, if you're interested, tickets can be purchased via Eventbrite. Um, general admission is around $39. And if you want to be a VIP, you can go in for 81 and change. Um, the list of participants, which will include celebrities, influencers, and athletes, hasn't been released yet, um, but we will definitely share once we know here on, on, on Pedal Body. Um, but it is um, one of several initiatives that Jess Sims has been involved, involved in uh, recently, including a partnership with U.S. Bank and becoming a good morning. She is very busy. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I guess, John, that wraps up the instructor in the news. So we can go right into um, picks, of the week. picks of the week. And I'm going to have you go ahead and kick it off. Okay, well, first up is Camilla's 30 minute Buster Rhymes ride from July 20th. We got this from Jessica Lee 23 and Andrea Prav. They said great energy and such a fun class. And then Maddie's. 10 minute core strength from the 21st. We got this from Spin Loving Mama and Tia Graciosa 12. They said, We played the floor is lava, keeping a weight in hand the whole class. Fun class that goes by quick. And then Karen Michelle's 30 minute yoga flow from Amajar 3. This is from July 21st as well. They said, Solid, good beginner class. Awesome. And then moving on, Matt Wolpers, 30 minute live DJ ride. It was from the 21st at 5.30 PM. This one was recommended by Live Your Why. And they said, so fun to see Matt and DJ John Michael back together again. Um, Selena Samuela, her 30 minute walk plus run from the 22nd. That was the one that I was in fact in. It was amazing. Um, this one was recommended by Organized Mama. Um, they said great mix of walk, jog, run intervals in, um, in this one. And she really did structure it beautifully. It was very easy for a beginner runner like myself to be able to, to keep up. Um, and then Bradley Rose, his 20 minute 2010s ride, um, also from the 22nd. It was at 7 a.m. This one was recommended again by Amaja Three. Um, and they said the playlist was Pop Perfection. And Chelsea Jackson Roberts, 20 minute morning slow flow yoga. That was on the 23rd. That's mine. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's all yours. <laughs> it's <fine. Take> it. <laughs> Whatever, dude. You know why I was excited <laughs> when I saw that? Because it actually was uh, my, my buddy Greg Pick Peloton got to be in that one live. And oh, he had, oh, nice. And yeah. Greg had said he was so happy. It was the first time that he got to do a yoga flow with her in studio, live in studio. And he, and I don't know if you knew this, but Greg used to deliver bikes back in the UK um, when COVID hit um, and the airline industry kind of <laughs> shut down. So he Before was, he was one, a flight attendant or no, 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 he was a flight attendant uh, and, took and a break. Been, yep. And oh. then when COVID hit, no, when COVID hit, he was one of the, you know, he got a job delivering bikes and he uh. said that, you know, folks, he would go in and, and he would always recommend Chelsea if someone, you know, people only thought it was the bike and he would show them on the bike, you know, the different modalities. And, um, and Chelsea was someone that he had always recommended. So he was live in that class. So when I saw it, I got so oh. excited. Um, but it was also recommended by Hey, it's Eric M and Amaja three. And they said good chill yoga class. So, um, yeah, it was a great <laughs> one. I did it. I did it as I did it from home, but it, it was a great one. Greg, uh, Greg has a great, um, system, you know, being a flight attendant. He, 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 he always gets into that New York uh, route, whatever, you know, uh, flight, I guess he's always working on it. He, he gets it perfectly with being at PSNY uh, so it's, many weekends. It is amazing. He Between London and New York, I know, he, he gets irritated when he has to fly anywhere else and he can't get his, you know, his, <laughs> yeah. New, York, his New York fix in. But he's got it down. He's got right. it down to an art. Um, so it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And he gets his schedule, which is kind of nice because he gets his schedule 
about six to eight weeks before. So at least when the classes come out, he, he, if, he if he's able to, but he, he was on a ton it, of wait yeah. list. Yeah. He was on a ton of wait list classes that he didn't get into. Um, so he says he like, he'll book one or two and then, you know, play the wait list game, um, on yeah. the others. So, um, yeah. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta play the wait list game. That's, that's. Yep. A hundred percent. That's how it goes at PSMY these days. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, next up, Eric Yeager's 20-minute Elton John ride in German from the 23rd of July. I got that from Hey, it's Eric M. They said so many good Elton John songs to choose from. And then Bex Gentry's 30-minute 80s run from July 23rd. Mandy Rose and It's a Bruin submitted this one. They said fun playlist combined with great coaching from Bex. Awesome. And then Kendall Tool, she had her 30 minute EDM ride. Um, it was on the 23rd at noon. Jessica Lee, 23, and Rachel Peters were both um, folks that had recommended this one. They said good energy with members in the studio and good EDM playlist to get you going. And then the next one is mine. The next two are mine. Um, it was, it was a, Meditation, a 10 minute empathy meditation with Ross Rayburn, which I did live in studio. It was the first time that I was doing a meditation live in studio. So that bit mm. in itself was an experience. You know, you, I, as everybody knows, I've, I'm such a huge advocate for the meditation process. I love it. And, um, I've, I've really gained so much, certainly through my injury from it, but being able to do it live, um, you know, in the studio, was such a different experience. And to do it with Ross was just very, very special. And he spoke about how this was something that it was very hard for him. Empathy meditations were hard for him to do. And he had the most amazing teacher who recently passed away. Um, that was somebody that got him into, you know, got him into doing it. Whenever he does one, he remembers, uh, you know, this, this, um, teacher. So it was lovely being able to have that aspect of it and get to be, you know, get to be there for that. Um, and then this one, I'm giving the hugest shout out to this pick of the week was Mariana's. 30 minute tropical house run. Um, it was from the 23rd. It was at 3 p.m. And it was my first real run that I ran in studio. Um, and she killed it. The playlist was amazing. The, the, it was the last live class in the studio for Sunday. So pretty much everybody had left and the, um, Mariana Mariachis, um, had, um, taken over the studio. So there were about 10, um, mariachis in there, um, who honestly are the kindest, nicest human beings that I have met at Peloton. I, you know, they are all Latinas, you know, all Spanish speaking. Obviously they all speak English. They were so mm -hmm. unbelievably welcoming and lovely to, to me as a non-Latina and everybody in that class had some connection to Mariana. So, um, Owen twirls, um, Owen was celebrating his birthday. Um, Adam, you Manhattan, Adam, Adam J was in there. Um, Owen's husband, Kenny was in there as well. So there was just a warmth in the studio. Um, and being able to stand in front of Mariana, everybody knows that you have an amazing relationship with her. She's fantastic. So, um, yeah, it was an awesome, awesome class. Um, so highly recommend it. And then, yep, next is you. Yeah, but next up, Rebecca Kennedy's 20 minute strength roll call, full body from July 24th. Hustle Hollis 23 gave us this one. They said, this one snuck up on you. Super tough workout. And then uh, switching over to the yoga, Nico Serrani's 30 minute yin yoga in German from July 24th. We got this from George Bob too. They said first yin yoga class in German was great. And then Alex Toussaint's 30 minute nineties hip hop ride from July 24th, Kim Carve 11 and Karen Zemeski Berry um, gave us this one. They said great hip hop playlist. Awesome. And then we'll round them off with Katie Wong. She had a 45 minute nineties rowing boot camp. It was from the 24th at 7 30 PM. Cupcake 81 recommend, recommended this one and said great playlist and a great workout. Jess Sims 60 minute bike boot camp. 
also full body, was on the 25th at noon. And this one was recommended by Lime in My Coconut. They said, tough, but great as always. And then the last pick of the week for this week was Christine's um, 30-minute new wave ride, also from the 25th at 7 p.m. This one was recommended by Kim Thousand and J9 Monaco. They said her new wave ride playlists always end up being great. And that And I have to shout out Christine. Not my pick of the week, but I I thought somebody would have submitted it for picks of the week, but I have to give a shout out on her 20 minute soft rock ride from Monday, the 24th, very, uh, yacht rockish vibe, but super, super good playlist. Her husband, Brian Hicks was, um, in the studio for it. She had a lot of funny interactions, especially in the pre-show with him, but I really loved the, um, the playlist on that soft rock ride. So definitely, and that, it might've been the very first soft rock ride um, that's ever been done on the platform, at least in several years. Uh, but yeah, definitely got me in the Yacht Rock mood, which is coming back, I think on August 4th with Jen Sherman, that series returns. So just around the corner. That's awesome. All right, well, we'll wrap it up quick. I know we had a long show for you guys this week. There was tons of information to give you. So um, thank you as always for taking the time to listen, hopefully to the end. Um, we appreciate you and um, really are, are thankful that you guys um, enjoy the show. So for me here in Maryland, bye for now, everybody. Yep. And for me here in Michigan, appreciate you tuning in, watching. And as always, we will see you on the leaderboard. Thank you for watching Pillow Buddy TV, your source for everything Peloton, by the community, for the community. Work out with us using the Pillow Buddy TV leaderboard tag and find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Pillow Buddy. Don't forget that we have a podcast available so that you can listen to us while on the move. Just search for Pillow Buddy TV on any major platform and hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.